Hey second graders, welcome back. I'm reading from the front porch. Maybe when I'm quiet you can hear some of the birds chirping in the tree outside my house. Or the car driving by. Now the birds? Maybe not. Anyhow, a good sign that spring is here. So back for some wayside chapters. Sorry for the delay. Last chapter we read was Mr. Gorf, chapter 10. Now we have chapter 11, Voices. Hmm. My name is Mr. Gorf, said the man who stepped out of the closet. And surprisingly, as it may be, the as it may seem, the children weren't afraid. It was his voice. His voice was full of comfort and wisdom, like an old leather chair in a dusty library. It didn't matter what he said. It felt good just to listen to him. He was a handsome man with neatly combed brown hair and clean fingernails. He carried a brown briefcase. Nobody even noticed that his nose had three nostrils. Three nostrils instead of two. Uh-oh. Since I'm going to be your teacher for the next few months, let me tell you a bit about myself. I was born in the Himalayan mountains in a town called Kathmandu. Kathmandu, said Terence. Cool. Everyone laughed. They weren't laughing at Terence. There was just something about the name of that city and the way Terence said it. Terence's voice was like a rusty drain pipe. A rusty drain pipe? Have you ever been married? asked Allison. Allison's voice was like a cat walking across a piano. No, I'm a bachelor, said Mr. Gorf. Allison smiled, greatly relieved. Well, that's enough about me, said Mr. Gorf. How about some of you telling me about yourselves? My name is Mac said Mac without raising his hand. Mac's voice was like a freight train. I built the biggest snowman you ever saw. Man, it was huge. I had to stand on a ladder to put the hat on his head. It was a stovepipe hat, like Abraham Lincoln wore, but I don't know why they call it that. We have a microwave oven. Have you ever put a bag of marshmallows in a microwave oven? Man, it's like... Mr. Gorf's nose flared. Can you try it? His right nostril flared to the right, his left nostril flared to the left, and the hole in the middle seemed to get larger. Mac coughed. He tried to speak, but no words came out. Thank you, Mac, said Mr. Gorf. Anyone else? Dee Dee raised her hand. Yes, young lady, said Mr. Gorf. Dee Dee giggled. She liked the way he said, young lady. My name is Dee Dee. She said, her voice was small but full of energy like a Super Bowl. I like soccer and Ninja Turtles. My favorite... Mr. Gore flared his nostrils. Can you flare? Dee Dee lost her voice, too. Who's next? Who's next? asked Mr. Gore. Yes, the girl in the polka dot shirt. My name is Marisa, said Marisa. I have two brothers and one sister. Marisa's voice was like a pineapple milkshake. Mr. Gore sucked it up through his nose. Hey, what's going on? said Todd. Todd was silent. Look at his nose, shouted Eric Bacon. It has... Eric Bacon had nothing else to say. Nobody say any, Jenny, Jenny tried to warn. Her voice disappeared up Mr. Gorf's nose. Soon the class was quiet. Mr. Gorf's middle nostril had snorted all of their voices. Except for Allison, she remained silent. She knew she'd get one chance to speak, and she had to wait for just the right moment. What good little boys and girls you are, said Mr. Gorf. So nice and quiet, he laughed. Of course, this isn't my real voice, he said. I stole this one, this voice from a gentleman I met in Scotland. He touched the tip of his nose. This is my voice, he squawked. If a donkey could talk, and if the donkey had a sore throat, and if it spoke with a French accent, that was what Mr. Gorf's voice sounded like. I can't do that. The donkey voice with a French accent and a sore throat? Maybe you can try it at home. But what he said next was even more horrible than his voice. Mrs. Gorf was my mommy. The children sat frozen in their chairs, too scared to move. Suddenly, there was a knock on the door. Mr. Gorf touched his nose. Who is it? He asked in the pleasant voice he stole from the Scottish gentleman. Miss Mush, said Miss Mush from the other side of the door. I just came up to say hello and welcome you to Wayside School. That's very nice of you, Miss Mush, said Mr. Gorf, but we're very busy right now. Maybe we can get together for tea and crumpets sometime. Miss Mush giggled. <laughs> that sounds lovely, she said. By the way, Mr. Gorf, are you married? No, I'm single, said Mr. Gorf. 
So am I, said Miss Mush. Miss Mush! Mush! shouted Allison. Help! Mr. Gorf is taking... Mr. Gorf's nose flared. Did you say something, Allison? asked Miss Mush. Mr. Gorf touched his nose. Then he spoke, this time using Allison's voice. Mr. Gorf is taking us on a field trip next week, but he might need help. Do you want to come with us? Maybe, said Miss Mush. Thank you, Allison. Oh, don't thank me, said Allison's voice. Thank Mr. Gorf. He's the best teacher in the whole world. I'm glad, said Miss Mush. He sounds very charming. And so do you. And so do you, Miss said Mr. Gorf, speaking like the gentleman from Scotland. He touched his nose. See you later, Miss Mush, said the voice of Eric Ovens. Take care, said Calvin's voice. Have a nice day, said Kathy's voice. Oh boy, what's gonna happen with all these children? We now have Mr. Gorf, Miss Mrs. Gorf's son. Mm -mm.